Hey everybody, welcome back to AP Stats. Um, let's hope this one goes a little bit smoother. My battery ran out on one of my headsets. So, anyway, um, first day of class of actual math. So we would have actually. So we've already done the introduction with the Parkinson's one. We would talk through the syllabus and get to know each other and what's your favorite dreams and all that other stuff. But now we're going to talk about actually get into some of the stuff that you're going to see on the AP test. Um, so. First thing I would have you guys do is you, when you walk into class, I should say, what first thing I would have you people do, my apologies, um, when you walk into class is to go through and pick your favorite class. And I would have four on the board, favorite elective class, art, PE, foreign language, and technology. Now, the data here is from last year. So I've got 18 kids who were in class last year. And so seven picked art, one picked PE, six picked foreign language, and four picked technology. Now, before we get into how we can display this, and that's the whole goal of today, is how do you display this data? The first of all is, what type of data is this? Actually, that's the second question. Is this categorical or quantitative? It's categorical. Why is it categorical? Because your answer is a topic, a word, that type of thing. It's not a quantity. So, what's your favorite elective? Physical education. Art foreign language, that type of thing. If you can't measure it, it's a categorical data. Um, quantitative would be like how tall you are, 72 inches. Great, there you go. Um, in terms of individuals, individuals are going to be the students themselves, and then the variable is your favorite elective. Now, what we end up doing then is I have um, everybody pull out their Chromebooks and they go over to Staplet. And so for Staplet, let's take a look there. And when you go there, you have a whole bunch of different things. So I picked categorical variable one, and I typed everything in here for the sake of time. And so notice I have my variable name. I'm inputting things as counts, and you'll see why here in a second. And then I'm going to say begin analysis. So there's my bar chart. Yay. Look how pretty that is. And then so if you look, and it will even tell you how many they are as you go over it. And then down below, there's a table that gives you frequency and relative frequency. And so frequency is how many actual things, how many actual individuals were surveyed. And then the relative frequency is the proportion of individuals surveyed. So in this case, the proportion out of the 18. Why is that important? Because if we change this to a pie chart, notice this is all done by proportions. Okay, so 38.9%, 22.2%, 33.3%, et cetera. So this is based, pie charts are based on relative frequency bar charts are based on frequency. Notice a couple things here. It's starting at zero and goes up to seven. It always has to start at zero. Frequency goes up the side. There are spaces here because it's a bar chart. We're also going to do something called histograms in a little bit where you won't have these spaces. Okay, but that's more of a quantitative graphing um, item. All right, so if we go back, oops, so it's not setting up right. So if you go back, I would have you guys write that all out. I'd point out a couple of things again. So, must start at zero. And then over here, you've got, um, you need to include all categories. So anyway, so that would be that. And we'd have to be able to come back and say, hey, yeah. So when I ask you for a bar chart, you can come back here. If I ask you for a pie chart, you can come back here. Now, then what we do is we take this a little step further. And we are going to go through and say, hey, what's your favorite? If for the seven of you guys in art, how many of you guys like math? How many like art? And we do this for PE, foreign language, and tech. And so this was the breakdown from last year. And then we start asking you guys some questions. So what percentage of all students chose PE? And if you guys went through Algebra 1 here at West Chicago, we would have covered this probably back in Algebra 1 three years ago, if I remember correctly. It's called two-way tables. So if this seems familiar, you're all set. All right, so percentage of all students. Now, again, here of all students, that's going to be your group. So we're doing this out of 18. So Chucho chose PE. Okay, we had one out of the 18. And then percentage of all students who chose math and chose art. So we want 
all students who chose math and art. This is one big group. So again, here, I'm going to take the 18. Math and art, right there, four. Percentage of students who prefer math, that chose tech. So percentage of the students who preferred math, that's your subgroup. So how many people preferred math? We have four, one, so that'd be five, seven, eight. We've got 10 over here. So that would be uh, tech. So we have one out of those eight people there. Okay. Now these each have specific names. Okay. This is called marginal relative frequency. Okay. The way that I remember it is that you're taking the numbers from the margin. So over here, I have seven, one, six, four. So I'm pulling the total of these, which should be over here in the margin, and I got it that way. Okay. Here, we're talking about two different topics. And so that's our joint. You see that okay? You can, okay. Relative frequency. Whoa. I am having no luck with red pens this week. And then last but not least down over here, this is called conditional. And the reason why it's called conditional is because you have to meet the people who meet this condition. Okay, so this is conditional relative frequency. All right, pretty straightforward. So, page two. How many variables do these things come up with? So, we've got how many? Oops, move it back down. My apologies. So how many variables does this table have? We have two categorical variables. Okay. Two categorical variables because both things that you're asking fall into categories. Um, in terms of which variable could explain or predict the other value, you could probably make it both go either direction. But in this case here, most people would say, oh, if you like math, you might like tech or things like that. The core class is predicting favorite elective. Okay. This is your explanatory variable. This is your response variable. This one's explaining that. Now, now that we've got these two categorical ones, we're going to go back to Staplet. And we're going to choose two categorical variables. When we do that, you type in the table. Hey, that looks familiar. I know it's a shock. And then you're going to choose, we're going to say begin analysis. And this is called a segmented bar graph. Ta-da. Now, notice what this does is that it's still going 100% here. So we're still dealing with relative frequency. But everything is stacked up. Okay, you got 50, boom, 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 boom. And even though there's no P in here, in the English group, that's fine. I said zero. Actually, do they even? No. Okay. I'm just curious if you were able to find it halfway in between. Anyway, there's that, or there is something called a side by side bar chart. And the side by side bar chart does the same thing, except that notice it goes boom, 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 boom. So they have all four bars right next to each other. Now, one of the questions on the notes are going to say, what's the relationship between a side-by-side -side bar chart and a segmented bar chart? Well, check this out. Art is 50%. Over here, art is 50%. <gasps> I know. All the percentages, it's all done by relative frequency, all the way across the board. 30, 0, 40, 30. We go down here. 30, 40, 0, 30. Ta-da. Okay. So I would have you draw those things out. So you draw all those things out here. And then, again, how do the bar and bar side plates relate? Grab the right pen. If you stack the bars, of the side-by-side -side graph, I could spell.
it would look like the segmented bar chart. Is there an association between favorite course subject and favorite elective? Describe it. You've got two different possible answers here. Okay. If your two graphs here, so if that graph and that graph, so if these two graphs look the same, or these two graphs look the same, then you would say no, not really. You get the same results regardless if you pick English, if, if the student said English or the student said math. Okay. In our case, since these don't look the same, I just did all of that without, sorry, I went back over to the stem plot for you. Boom, there we go. Okay, so since that, these two bars don't look the same, we would say, yeah, there could be some sort of association there. Okay, so um, we would say something to the extent of, yes, there is an association. since the bars don't look the same. Since they don't look similar. If there was not an association between favorite course subject and favorite elective, what would the graphs look like? Oh, well, the bars would look the same. Which ones would look the same? Between English is the same for both math and English. Ta-da! Now, I'm going to break up these lessons into two parts. I'm going to do this one lesson here, and then I'm going to go off. And the second part of the lesson is this. Okay, There is kind of the important ideas where we formalize everything. Is the first idea here is for you to experience everything and then formalize it, and then we'll go through a check your understanding. And what I will, and so I'll explain more on that in the next video. So I'll provide the link below. Talk to you soon.